Hi everyone, I'm Cinder 9 and welcome to Season 2 of Dragon Discussions. I'm calling it Season 2 because I'm going to be listening to your suggestions of what you want to hear talk about. You can post what you would like to hear me go over and what you would like to hear discussed on my Steam group page. The link is on the channel page and will also be a link to it on the description of this video. So I'm going to do the very first one that was suggested. And it's about microtransactions, and this is very interesting. Uh, kudos to the poster, Carson Fire, making, uh, giving several points. And I'm going to go over all of them. Uh, the question is, I'd, or the comment is, I'd like you to share your opinions on microtransactions, more narrowed down, having to pay real money in order to, and there's four things that I'll be going over. Uh, the first one is being able to have better gear slash stats than other players. Uh, pay to win. This is overall microtransactions is where the company is going. And I've seen it for a few years now. And it's something I would love to talk to executives about. Like I said, I've seen microtransactions grow and grow over the past few years. And the reason for that is they work. A lot of free-to-play games have a lot of microtransactions in them. And if you're curious of what microtransactions are, they are, think of the cash shop in free-to-play games, or in a lot of games now, just have some type of cash up, or hey, you can get this special piece of gear for $2, or you can get this 24-hour boost to EXP for $0.99, cents. or you can get double money for a week for $3, things like that. Those are microtransactions. And it's where the company, the industry is going because it works. People are much more willing to pay a dollar fifty here, a dollar there, two dollars here, instead of throwing down eighty dollars for a game that they don't even know it might not be any good. Might be broken, might not be what they expected. But they're willing to get a game for free and then like pay three dollars because they really enjoy the game and go oh i'm gonna pay three dollars here and that's that's fine with me but going to the actual comment narrowing it down let's talk about the first one pay to win and this is i would say the most used type of microtransaction it's to where hey you can either take 200 hours of game time to get this set of equipment or you can pay five dollars and we give it to you right now that's pay to win and i personally have a big problem with it in certain aspects in competitive games i have a really big problem with pay to win because it completely throws off balance and again this all goes down to the company and how well you do it if you make the goal obtainable, so let, let's take for example, I want a, I'm just going to pick a random gun, a M, an M249 saw. Let's say I'm playing a shooter game, and I want this M249 saw. It will take me, on my current pace, 20 hours of gameplay to get, if I keep playing at the level I am. You know, it takes uh, EXP to unlock, let's say. But you just don't get a lot of EXP per level or per fight or whatever. Well, I could just continue. It's not out of reach. I feel like, oh, I can get that. You know, I really enjoy the game. I'll get that eventually. Or I could pay $4 to get it. But let's say it's a competitive shooter. And this is the M249 saw has become the best gun in the game due to unbalancing. And everybody's using it. Well, if I don't have it, then I just feel like, I'm, I'm not having any fun anymore because I'm getting killed by it all the time. And I feel like I have to pay that $4, $4 in this example to, to even compete. That's, that's a problem. And that's where a lot of competitive games are. And you feel like you have to pay to get gear, to stay updated with gear, or you're just going to fall behind. That's kind of the out in some ways outdated notion of microtransactions and a lot of companies have been going to other other directions with it 
But you see that a lot to where you feel like you have to pay to even compete. And that's a, that's a big problem. I personally don't like it, but it's, it's out there. And you just have to, you have to accept it. That that's the way that's the way those industries are. That's how they make their money. It's like oh, but people want people really like this game, and want to compete. Now I said that's that's part of it. The other part where I don't think pay to win and in in quotes pay to win unquote. I take I'm going to take a game uh, Warframe, which is one of the biggest free to play games right now. It's absolutely huge. In a sense, it is pay to win because it takes so much effort to unlock anything in that game. It's not impossible. I've done it several times myself. Is go out, grab the gear. You need a blueprint and certain pieces. Get them and then build it. It's free to play, but you really do feel like you have to spend some money to get to get somewhere quickly. But why I don't have as much of a problem with it in Warframe is because it's a, for the most part, there is PvP in it now. But its roots is as a cooperative game. I don't know why people are complaining so much about a free game that they have to make money. Where it's co-op anyway. <laughs> You're going to be getting help from these people that have paid money. And so if you want to stay free, free to play, you you can. You you can not spend any money on it. And you can ask maybe your friends or a guild or whoever that maybe they have spent a lot of money on the game. Because they can. They want to do that. And they can help you get the gear. There are plenty of nice people in Warframe willing to do that. That's where the pay to win kind of gets... It's not as cut and dry to me. It's when it's a co-op game. Because you're not really losing out if the, if the, if it's you know the players are nice it, again it depends quite a bit on the community but they, that's why i think a pay to win i really don't like it in competitive because it i don't play it after a little while just because you feel like you have to spend money and i'm not willing to dump that amount of money into into a competitive game with cooperative it's not as cut and dry the next comment is continuing to play the game without waiting like, for example, what uh, what the poster put, like, Facebook games make you do that. I, I'm not on Facebook. I don't, uh, I'm, don't do Facebook. I know some people that are on Facebook a lot and play those type of games. So I understand what he means. And some uh, phone games have gone to this. It's, <laughs> I'm okay with it. And this is the thing you have to remember about all of this. Oh, well, it's free. It should be completely free. Let's use some common sense, and that's something I love about you all as a community. You have common sense. As my, my YouTube community is you all have common sense and smarts. It's still a business. It's still a company. There's costs to keep, to keep the game running, servers to make updates, to keep personnel, building costs wherever they are, expenses you know, bills, etc., etc., etc. It's free to play for us, but it wasn't free to make. Don't forget that. They got to make their money somewhere, and this is one of the ways to do it. I don't have a problem with this because this is completely on you. If you're, if you enjoy the game that much, and again, it's, it's all relative to the game. <laughs> if, you can't wait one hour to get another 15 minutes of gameplay or however long you would play without waiting. If it's a good ratio of time, then I put that on the player that you can't wait. And if you want to spend the money to continue to enjoy it, that's on you. I've played several, many energy-based games. And as long as the ratio was okay, it's like, yeah, I get... 20 minutes of gameplay and I'm really enjoying it now I've got to wait an hour two hours to have my energy refill that's fine I can go do other stuff I can go play another game I can make a video for you all I can edit you know whatever it is you do I can talk to friends I can play another energy based game and kind of rotate there's 
other things to do. This I don't have as I don't really have a problem with. Again, as long as the energy ratio is good. Uh, some games it's not. It's like all right, I get two minutes of gameplay, and now I have to wait five hours for my energy to refill. No, that's that's not good. There's a balance to this, and people are still trying to figure out the perfect balance for the microtransactions. You don't want it to be, as a company, let's look at it from the company. I can't make it too small, like two minutes and then six hours to wait. Two minutes of gameplay, six hours for your energy refill. I can't do that because then people will become very frustrated and bored and not pay. On the other hand, if I make it too much the opposite direction, people won't pay at all. You got to find that happy medium to where if people enjoy your game, they might pay to keep playing. <clears throat> it's a tricky balance. But once a game finds that, then they can really give it. And there will always be people that can play for free, especially if the balance is good. Like, oh, I don't mind waiting the hour and a half for my energy to refill or the two hours that's fine i can go do something else like i said but there are people that really enjoy the game oh let's throw the dollar 50 cents to refill my energy so i can keep playing like i said i i try to take a step back with these discussions and look at it from all angles and just try to keep the company in mind it's easy to say Free to play, I should be able to play as much as I want. It's easy to say that, but think if you were the company. You've got to you gotta make your money somehow. You've got to at least break even or the game's going to go down. <laughs> so as long as there's a good, a good uh, ratio of energy to time or gameplay to energy refill time, I don't have a problem with it. In fact, it's probably the least amount of problem I have with the game as long as it's done right. Having to pay real money like that. The next one, having more chances to complete the level you're on. Uh, for example, Candy Crush, many other casual games on the free-to-play market. Uh, this is another huge uh, thing, is the uh, mobile market. It's a Candy Crush, things like that. Uh, it's really exploded, and they are free to play, but then if you get stuck on a level, well, you ca you might need this boost, or you do you want to pick up from where you left off? You know, you're already halfway through the level. Do you think you can make it through the other half of the level? Spend a dollar and try. Again, this falls, to me, it feels more on, it falls more on us as long as the game is balanced. Some of them aren't. You have to spend the money to get through the level. But that falls more under the pay to win. To get through it, you pretty much have to spend money. If the game is balanced well and not unfair, you might just be like, no, I'll uh, I'll start the level over and just give it another try later. Again, I think it falls more on us as players to be more conscious about microtransactions. It's so easy to spend a dollar here, a dollar there, and before we know it, we've spent tens, hundreds of dollars on a game. But if you want to do that, that's your prerogative. As a as a gaming community, we need to become smarter about about transactions, microtransactions in particular, because there are so many of them out there. And like I said, this is the this is where the industry has gone is going and will go for the foreseeable future because it works people spend money in small doses like this even i do on occasion i really enjoy a game now i don't mind spending two dollars for this special thing and that's what they're banking on if there are a hundred thousand people that end up liking the game and everybody spends two dollars hey that's two hundred thousand dollars that's that's where microtransactions work more chance to complete the level you're on again i know i may sound like a broken record it depends on how the game is built so it's it and because there's so many of them out there now it's kind of hard to paint a broad brush but for the most part i feel like they're done at least the really huge ones like candy crush from what i heard i don't play candy crush i have friends that are obsessed with it <laughs> and i mean obsessed with it 
that you they're they're done well and it's up to you to decide whether you really want to spend that dollar or not i don't mind the company going that route again as long as the levels obtainable <laughs> you can beat it cuz if not and they make it to where you have to spend money that goes back to pay to win which is really the one that's unacceptable is you have to spend money to win have to to at least compete in whatever shape it is whether it's you're playing alone is to get through the level or you're playing competitively if you have to pay to to get through it then that's that's iffy and in that regard warframe kind of is on that line but again it's 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 on the border because you can get friends help and it is co-op so it's it's there it's close I feel like you do have to spend a little bit of money in Warframe to to get somewhere, but it, it's more acceptable than the uh, competitive to me because it is cool. <coughs> Excuse me. So I don't have a big problem with giving more chances to complete the level you're on as long as you could complete the level in a decent amount of time with a decent amount of, of chances. The problem with a lot of those games that I have tried is it feels like at some point, you have to buy one of the you know, special items like, uh, oh, you get to shoot three times this round instead of once. Or you get a multi-ball or you get uh, an explosive round or, you know, something. That you feel like you have to buy one of those special power-ups, which costs money, just to get through the level. That's where it becomes pay to win and that's, I don't know, more unacceptable to me. And the last one ties in with point A, as it's put here, but bragging rights. Feeling you are superior to other players since you paid money to the game in order to become more powerful and or fashionable. Now I'm going to take this in two different routes. One is the more powerful part. Bragging rights, that's part of human, human society. There will always be people that have money to burn and are like, yeah, check out this ultra ultra shotgun 9000 with 50 it shoots 15 shots per pull of the trigger you know and all it cost me you know 15 dollars but you know for for this baby it's worth it and they're just bragging that's always going to happen <laughs> and as long as microtransactions are around and like i've said they're going to be around you'll always get those people that will brag that they bought the items that's that's part of it i don't like it <laughs> i i really don't but you're always going to have that you're going to have people that that brag that they did it and those people you just kind of ignore honestly that's that's how i feel about it i just kind of ignore those people the feeling you're superior to other players part, that's also part of why microtransactions work. It's, again, human nature. You want to be better than that person next to you and have that superior feeling. There are a lot of competitive people out there, and that's what, what makes the microtransactions work. They will pay money to stay on top, and that's where microtransactions work really work it's because a lot of your player base is going to be free to play but as long as you can get the money out of those super competitive people that will pay the money that'll pay for that'll pay for all the free players that's the key to be more powerful to me the least egregious i guess i could put it that way microtransaction is when it's purely cosmetic and some games have gone that way to where, hey, you could pay $3 for this cool looking outfit, but that's all it is. There's no stat boost to it. And people do pay for that just because, oh, that looks cool. You could do seasonal things. You could do, you know, a Halloween outfit, a Thanksgiving outfit, a Christmas outfit, a Valentine's outfit, a St. Patrick's Day outfit, a columbus day outfit if you really wanted to a fourth of july outfit uh, i live in the united states so i'm going with those uh with kind of those holidays um but no matter where you are you could do your 
uh, nation's holidays. Flag Day, you know, the Dia de los Muertos, uh, whatever you want to do. It's, you can have different different costumes for that and that's all it is is it's a it's a costume i am perfectly fine with that you know you may feel sad that you can't have that really cool looking costume because it costs money but it's not like people are getting an advantage with it and that's where really microtransactions player player bases become split it's because it goes down to the free players who are clawing and scratching and trying to get everything, and then the players that have paid and are running the highest end content or whatever because they, they paid money to the game. And there's a fissure there. There really is. The free players have to hate the paid players for uh, usually screwing up the balance of a game, and the paid players hate the free players because they're not good enough to run whatever they're running. Because it just goes around and around in this vicious circle. Why can't we all just get along? <laughs> That's what, how I feel about it. But the fashion-wise is what I have the least problem with. The company still gets their money. You're not falling behind as a player because it's just for looks. As a free player, and if you're a paid player, you got something really cool to show off. So you still get that bragging rights. You get to stroke your own ego. But the free players may feel sad, but they don't feel completely put off because they're like, "Yeah, but I could still beat you in a fight," you know. So it's it's one of it's one of those things. Uh, to me, the the fashionable to look the to look get a different outfit or something just to look look cooler. That's the lowest, it's the most kind microtransaction it is the, I guess, kind of the best way I can put it. There you go. Those are the four points and kind of my opinions on those different types of microtransactions. I hope it all made sense. If not, leave a comment and I'll respond to it as best I can. If any of my points were really unclear, sometimes I get off on tangents and I, I apologize for that as I try to cover all angles of a side, or at least try to. <laughs> I've done it all with microtransactions. I've been a completely free player. I've been a player that's paid a little bit of money for fashion or just to be a little more powerful. And I've spent on... One occasion, I've spent way more money than I care to admit on a game in the past. <laughs> That's, you know, uh, if several years ago. I spent way, way, uh, quite a bit of money on a free-to-play game. <clears throat> and it's one super pay-to-win, but it just to really help me, help me through the game and get a lot of stuff. And a friend of mine spent even way more than I did. So, and by way more, I'm talking, for me, a few hundred dollars uh, I spent on this game. So, I mean, I've been all over the spectrum when it comes to microtransactions. So, that's why I, I really enjoyed that this was the first comment for this new Dragon discussion because I feel like I have a, a, a unique perspective on it. I've been all over the place. As a matter of fact... Full disclosure, because that's what I like to do on this channel. I'm playing a free-to-play game right now on my phone. I play Brave Frontier. I don't know if any of you play Brave Frontier. I've not spent a dime on the game, and I'm having a ton of fun. And I've played it for months, so it's not like I just started. Brave Frontier is a huge game. I know it makes its money. I know people spend a lot of money on the game. I haven't, and I feel like I'm, I'm doing pretty darn well. Because they're nice enough to give you chances to get the cash, the cash items. And yes, it will take me quite a bit longer to get to get units and things than somebody that's paying the game. But it never feels out of reach for me, and that's the key. That's that's what keeps your free play your free players happy, and your paid players are happy because they're getting the best stuff right then, or getting the chance to get good stuff right then. They're you know paying money. 
I think they, they have a really good balance going on. Like I said, I've been all over the spec spectrum. Those are my opinions on microtransactions on pay to win, uh, continuing the game without waiting. So energy based systems, which a lot of games, uh, a lot of free to play games, do some type of right now, is the energy based, uh, the getting extra lives, having more chances to beat the level you're on, and bragging rights to be either uh, more powerful or fashionable. There's those. The best thing about Dragon Discussions is you get to leave your opinions in the comments below. So go ahead. Tell me what you think. Do you agree? Disagree? Have some different opinions of your own? Let me know. That's what this is for. To have a intelligent, just a civil, nice form to have healthy discussions like this. Whether it's a company, something going on in the industry, whatever, check out the Steam group and you can see what, I, what I'm talking about. Go to the discussions page. I have one up for LP suggestions. Click on the one for Dragon Discussions. I have the rules posted and sign up, become part of the group, and let me know what you would like to discuss. Until the next one, I'm Cinder A9. Remember to shoot for the stars and take care, everyone.